Our final witness, Anne-Marie Ambrose, is here today to share Pennsylvania's work on its JJ system. Ms. Ambrose, a 13-year advocate for young people in the JJ system, currently is responsible for the operation of four regional offices, which serve various public and private child welfare and juvenile justice needs. She will share with us the forward steps that Pennsylvania has taken to address delinquency and other aspects of the JJ system. I'm happy to have this opportunity to be here today to represent Pennsylvania as well as juvenile justice administrators and advocates on the critical importance of the reauthorization of the Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention Act. The JJDPA has been critical in supporting juvenile justice system improvement and for delinquency prevention. The establishment of Pennsylvania's State Advisory Group, the Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention Committee, within the Pennsylvania Commission on Crime and Delinquency in 1978 has provided tremendous leadership and commitment to improving juvenile justice system and to provide a consistent focus on delinquency prevention. This important work has been accomplished over the past several years, primarily because of the strength of the JJDPC. We are appointed by the governor without regard for political affiliation, but based on experience, expertise, and dedication in the field of juvenile justice. Our committee is composed of judges, probation officers, researchers, youth and victim advocates, defenders, district attorneys, practitioners, community leaders, providers, and educators. We have the best and the brightest engaged in intensive discussions and planning to create a framework for juvenile justice and delinquency prevention goals for Pennsylvania youth and families. We believe in the fair, humane, and just treatment of all youth in the juvenile justice system. We believe that all youth have the promise and potential to become protective citizens through our juvenile justice mission of balanced and restorative justice, which includes protection of the community, accountability for offenders, and competencies to enable children to become responsible and productive members of the community. The JJDPC meets quarterly and submits a plan to the governor every two years. Subcommittees meet quarterly as well to drive the work and make recommendations in critical priority areas such as female services, evidence-based prevention, as well as disproportionate minority confinement. Through the years, our committee has used the goals of the JJDPA and critical federal funding as a springboard for juvenile justice reform that has become a national model. Devastating cuts in federal funding over the last few years have forced the committee to reevaluate our work and focus even more on prevention as well as sustainability of programs. Our key priority areas are evidence-based prevention, disproportionate minority contact, aftercare, and behavioral health. The JJDPC has used much of their federal funding over the years to invest in over 160 evidence-based prevention and intervention programs, such as multidimensional treatment foster care, functional family therapy, and multisystemic therapy. In the absence of any good research that establishes that public safety is enhanced by prosecuting juveniles in adult court or placing them in institutions, Pennsylvania has invested in supporting youth and families in their communities. In order to build our current prevention efforts and build more in-state capacity, planning is underway to develop a resource center for evidence-based prevention and intervention practices. As you have heard on this panel, these interventions are both cost-effective and have proven outcomes. Important resources like this require stable federal funding to succeed. In 2003, the JJDPC priorities became the foundation for our work with the MacArthur Foundation's Model for Change initiative. The partnership with MacArthur has been critical to advancing JJDPC's priorities and seeking to promote broad juvenile justice system reform in the areas of aftercare, mental health, and disproportionate minority contact. Pennsylvania believes in keeping children and families together whenever possible and using the least restrictive intervention necessary. We have implemented performance-based standards launched by the Council of Juvenile Correctional Administrators and supported by OJJDP to ensure quality of care in juvenile correctional facilities for youth who require secure confinement, but believe that most youth should be served in the community if possible. Pennsylvania SAG, the Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention Committee, have helped to create a model juvenile justice system. In 2005, of 45,504 delinquent dispositions, only 3,487 youth were placed in out-of-home care. Much of our good work has been built around the core protections for children found in the JJDPA. Those protections should be maintained and strengthened through reauthorization. Our work has been made increasingly difficult because of significant cuts in funding. 
OJJDP should be charged with not only holding states accountable for adhering to the goals of JJDPA, but for providing technical assistance to states in order to achieve those goals. Incentive funding should be also be made available for states that are able to demonstrate the ability to create innovative and effective local initiatives that provide treatment to youth involved in the juvenile justice system while keeping communities safe. OJJDP should be responsible for measuring outcomes in states that receive federal funding. Positive outcomes for youth, families, and communities must be achieved in order to maintain and increase federal funding. I hope that I've been able to communicate the critical importance of reauthorization of the JJDPA. It has helped create a synergy in Pennsylvania's juvenile justice system that recognizes the need to provide an opportunity for redemption for our troubled youth while valuing the importance of community protection and the community's critical role in achieving youth redemption. Our reform efforts would not have been possible without federal funding that was available over the last several years. In order to sustain our progress and continue to make critical investments in prevention, including evidence-based programs, we must receive additional federal funding. Thank you for the opportunity to address you on this very important issue. I encourage Congress not only to support, but also strengthen the JJDPA. Thanks.